Welcome back to Repair University. In this video, we're going to talk about estimating welded panel replacement on cars. So we're going to stick away from the frame rails right now and come back to that in a later video, but we are going to cover the common sheet metal. So your B-pillars, your quarters, your rockers, and your rear body panels. And some of the things that you need to know as an estimator to make your estimates better. And when I need to make my estimates better, well, I call in Larry from P&L Consultants. Larry, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me again. What are some of the problems, some of the issues, when an estimator is going to be writing a, an estimate to replace one of these panels that they need to know? It's really twofold. Uh, any one of the damage assessors, either insurance company or body shop, really need, need to know their database P pages. Uh, obviously, the insurance company is only going to write on their, you know, their system. The shop, on the other hand, needs to know the insurance company's system and also their own system. And then you're also going to have to have the OEM repair information, either from the manufacturer's website or from some independent third-party provider of repair information on how the panel gets reattached, what materials you're going to need. And we talk about the OEM repair information a lot, and, and sometimes we, you know, shops, I did this car last week, and so I know it, I don't need to do it again. Is it always important the estimator goes each and every time to that database and checks those procedures? Uh, with, in my own personal opinion, some of the manufacturers really don't change information that drastically, that quickly. Uh, with some of the German car companies, yeah, you really do need to check. I was at a training class one time and actually the information changed while we were in the class between Monday and Tuesday, let's say. The information actually changed. So it's really important that you go and check that information uh, uh, each, each time you go and write that. Even if it's the same car, you want to still check that information. So when I'm looking for welded panel replacement, I have a couple of different options. Um, I could either, you know, with the OEMs going to allow me to do a full panel replacement or some of these parts have sectioning procedures. What are some considerations when the estimator's thinking about, well, do I do the whole panel or do I do a section? Well, it, it goes back to what uh, uh, we've always been taught. How much factory welds and factory corrosion protection am I going to destroy by doing a full panel replacement versus doing a, uh, a, a sectioning procedure? Most manufacturers do have sectioning procedures for their cars. Uh, for example, if this vehicle was hit down the side and we needed two doors, a B-pillar, outer skin only, and a quarter panel skin, uh, it might be better to put the unicide on in a whole section. The problem is up at the top area here, the roof overlaps the uh, uh, quarter panel. So now you'd have a problem that you would destroy the roof. So in essence, I might replace the bottom as mostly as a full piece, the B-pillar up to the area over here, which is kind of marked out, and the quarter in the window opening area as per the manufacturer's recommendations. So you're putting in most of it, but not the whole thing. And when we're looking at sectioning versus full panel replacement, it changes a lot of the included operations in the procedure. And I see a lot of estimators just kind of click and go. And, and you know, we used to have an old saying, it was prego. It was in there, right? <laughs> and then, but we've lost a lot of items. What are some of the common things that maybe an estimator needs to think about that may not be included in a replacement operation, but needed by the technician to do the repair? Well, you obviously have uh, a burn damage to other panels or drill damage, depending if you're rivet bonding, weld bonding, or, or mag, or resistance welding the panel in. You have foams that are inside a lot of these panels. You have sound deadening material sometimes as pads that are added on. And almost every manufacturer out there now has some sort of adhesive bonding material or sound dampening material that goes over the wheel well opening area, um, even if the panel has no other adhesives in it. So that's important to know that because you can have anywhere from $35, $40 to $600 worth of material before you ever buy the actual component that is required to replace that panel. And you know, that can make a big difference on the repair or the total loss of a car, especially if we're getting close on a, you know, a total side out or a really hard hit on the Especially rear. if you've got a side hit on a vehicle like this where uh, Mercedes-Benz requires uh, uh, resistance welds where the arms can reach and rivets where the arms can't reach with some seam sealer and uh, a bonding material over the wheel well opening area, and we're replacing two doors and the pillar's okay, but the airbag deployed for the side. Well, you need two door trim panels, you need a roof, uh, um, a roof headliner, and obviously the airbags, you're, you're talking, it might total the vehicle out depending on the age of the vehicle, the market area, and obviously the amount of mileage on the vehicle. Now frequently when I'm doing welded panel replacements and maybe I've got a floor extension on a quarter or I'm coming up to the rear body extension, 
I see a lot of zero times in the estimating system. And that kind of confuses estimators a lot. And I think they kind of click off and just kind of keep going. But there's some operations there that a technician is actually going to have to perform. Is there a resource for an estimator when he encounters that zero, no time, no labor for something in the estimating database? It, it really is. I mean, unfortunately, most of the time the insurance companies and the, the body shops both make the same mistake of they just assume the part is either jumps on the car by itself or somehow winds up in the car. Uh, the, the DEG, um, uh, which is the uh, www.degweb.org, is an orga uh, independent organization uh, put together by three major uh, uh, auto body associations that tries to help out uh, or mediate to the database providers. If I don't have a labor time, I would write down the VIN, uh, the uh, year of the vehicle, what the issue is that I saw, maybe a suggested time, and then uh, the DEG would then uh, submit that to the appropriate uh, uh, database provider, CCC, Mitchell, or Autotex, to find out, hey, look, guys, you left this out, or why is this blank? And then they would come back with a response. Usually three days to a week, you'll get a response. Is there any value to the estimator when, you know, if the vehicle's at the shop, or, I, you know, say I'm the adjuster and I'm at the shop, you know, writing that one there, getting a technician to come out when I know I'm going to have a welded panel and kind of go over that with me to help me with all these included, not included, and left off items? Every time I've te taught a, a class on estimating or I teach and consult for shops, you, you have to have a group meeting afterwards. I mean, generally, you get the car in, you start writing your initial estimate, like we talked about with the pictures and stuff like that. You have someone tear the car down, you get the car measured, and then as a final, when you're now doing your final portion there, you get your painter over there real quick. You find out what kind of paint is this? Is this a really hard color to match? Is it three stage or four stage? Uh, uh, you get your uh, frame tech over there. Even sometimes your body tech. Hey, do you think you can repair this panel here and you know not go into the other panel or not go too far with it? Or what kind of time do you think you would need to fix this? And get an opinion of it because like I said before, as a, as a damage assessor, you don't need to have to actually do the repair. You have to know how it has to be done. All right, so having the important information, all that information up front becomes the key essential to successful estimate. Correct. All right. No matter what role you play in the industry, whether you're an insurance adjuster inspecting it in the tow yard or at the field, or you're the shop estimator inspecting it from a DRP environment, getting a correct estimate is the first step to customer satisfaction and a quick repair. So be sure that you have all the information together, that you're ready to go to the car to get everything that you need so that we don't have any late surprises, or that we perform a poor repair by doing the wrong thing in the beginning. Stay tuned for more episodes of Repair University as we dive deeper into estimating.